Hi, I'm Paul, The Running Shoe Guru. This is Martin Handbook, and this is my guide to the best books running shoes in 2023. Books Running Shoes has to be the most popular brand in running specialty store. Certainly, I'll sit my neck and say that's true in the UK, and I'll bet they're one of the most popular in the US, if not around the world. What makes these shoes so good? What makes them so popular? And which are the best book shoes in various categories? First of all, I'm going to start with what I think is the best cushioned running shoe from books, and it's the Glycerin 20. It's available in the regular Glycerin model and in the Glycerin GTS. Books and GTS models are their go-to support options or versions of the shoes. So this is a nitrogen injected form material. Nitrogen is a larger molecule than air, and ultimately it creates a softer, a springier and a more durable cushioning material for your shoes. It's £165 in the UK, $160 in the US. Comes in at 286 grams, that's 10.01 ounces. We've got a stack height of 29 millimeters in the heel. It's a 10 mil drop, dropping to 19 mil in the forefoot. Good coverage on the sole here. Plenty of rubber extending to all the key areas. And again, with the nitrogen form being so durable, good rubber coverage on the outsole is equally as important to add to that durability. In the regular widths, I think it comes up a slightly roomier fit. It's got a very plush upper, lots of padding in the tongue, around the ankle collar and in the heel and overall the padding itself throughout the upper is very soft very plush it's an engineered mesh it's still breathable but it does fit a little bit roomier and it's got a bit of stretch to it in the forefoot here as well so it's quite adaptable it is available in width fittings but a lot of people that would ordinarily have a wide in a books i'm finding are getting away with the regular fit in the glycerin because it's quite generous quite roomy overall neutral version neutral cushioned and it is the the quality of the ride and the durability that makes it the number one pick for me when this nitrogen foam was introduced it was in the aurora bl that's the blue line range of shoes it felt fresh it felt energized never lost any of the cushioning and it's the same with the glycerin this nitrogen foam really is the business for everyday training when it comes to support like i said it is available in the gts option with the guide rails I think other shoes are more effective from books, but we'll come on to that. Because the nitrogen foam is very soft and springy, that negates a little bit of the benefit of the guide rails in the, the GTS version. So I found when watching people run on video on the gait analysis on the treadmill, that there is still a little bit of wobble. It does offer a little bit more support in the GTS than the neutral, but it's not as effective as other shoes. So what is, and I'll come on to that right now, because I think the best support shoe from books is the Adrenaline 23. Now, the Adrenaline has been updated with the guide rail system for the last three versions now. I, like many other specialists, were a little bit skeptical going away from the dual density or even triple density as it was medial support in the Adrenaline of a few years ago. We were skeptical as to how effective the guide rails would be, but we needn't have worried because as soon as it came into being, it was very effective controlling all the pronation and generally any instability in the runner's gait. The guide rails are these stripy sections on both the lateral, the outside edge and the medial side, the inside edge of the arch. Essentially, it's a continuation of the cushioning, but it comes up, it extends around the heel of the shoe. So basically, it's cupping the heel and the foot's sitting within the shoe like this, and that provides the stability. Books themselves liken it to the, the bumpers or the rails that you can lift up for the kids at the bowling alley. The guide rails keep the foot centralized in a more neutral position in the center of the shoe. So it's great for anybody that's a little bit unstable. And that includes a lot of people. So people may actually supinate a little bit 
and this will control those type of people, but it's most effective for mild overpronators. In fact, it's very effective. The cushioning is smooth, very well cushioned, and a very durable feel to it. It's an everyday training shoe. It's very durable. It's a workhorse shoe for everyday miles. This is the one, and with that support, a lot of people can wear it. In the UK, £135, $140 in the US. Weight, 289 grams, 10.2 ounces, 12 mil drop, 28 and a half, 16.5 in the forefoot. So nice drop to it. And with a control type shoe, I find that a little bit higher drop, 12 mil, does take some of the, uh, the strain and the pressure off the Achilles, the soleus of the calf muscle. And again, with pronation or rotation of the foot, that can lead to issues. So the stack and the stability make it a great shoe for people that have got stability issues or just minor little aches and pains in the lower legs. We've got a nice engineered mesh upper, plush through the tongue, ankle collar, heel as well. Plenty of padding in there and it's really soft. It just welcomes the foot inside and generally it's a very comfortable place to be. So the Books Adrenaline 23, the best support category shoe from Books. Now they've got quite a good offering of trail options and all of them are really nice. I did find it difficult to choose between this shoe and the Caldera. The Caldera is essentially a trail version of the glycerin. So you've got a deep stack of nitrogen foam with a trail saw on it. And it's a really nice option. But my number one choice is the Cascadia 17. Now the Cascadia has been around a long time. It's a real go-to workhorse shoe for the trails. It's 135 pounds, $140. It weighs 312 grams, which is 11 ounces. And what do we've got going on here? Well, straight away, we've got a good outsole with plenty of traction. We're about three to four millimeters deep in these lugs, but it's the kind of aggressive shape of them. You can see the forward facing chevrons here and the rear facing chevrons in the heel. So when you're coming downhill, they grip. And when you're pushing, ascending, climbing, they bite in to give you that extra traction, extra power when you're pushing off. They do give you plenty of confidence on the trail. And we can see that this season's shoe is updated a little bit in the shape of the midsole. It's using the DNA Loft V2 cushioning material. So that's the same that you'll find on the Adrenaline that we've looked at on the Ghost. So it's the cushioning that's used on the band's most popular road models. You're not short of a very well cushioned feel on the trails but combined with this outsole and the way it's split, we've got these deep grooves through the shoe, it allows the shoe to kind of adapt to both contours and ascending and descending the climbs as well. So it's a very adaptable shoe. You can kind of tackle technical trails with it. It feels quite nimble on the foot. I think this is good enough to take anywhere and it's adaptable enough to deal with roads on the way to the trails, gravel, paths, polished trikes grass and muddy sections as well. We've got a stone guard in there as well and that acts to provide a little bit of stability and a little bit of the effect on toe off that you would get from say a carbon plated shoe. It's not that level of responsiveness. It's an everyday trail shoe. Upper, we can't complain about this. It's standard books. It's very nice quality. It's a closer knit to the mesh. We've got a rubber bumper around the heel. So that will provide protection if you're kicking stones, rocks, tree roots, that kind of thing. It also makes it very much more durable around the base of the upper and the, at the top of the midsole cushioning as well. One word of caution, when I'm fitting trail shoes, I'd always recommend that you go up maybe an extra half size on a road shoe when you've got a mesh construction to the upper, you've got a little bit of stretch in it. Coming down steep hills, if your foot slides forward in a road shoe, there's a little bit of give. In a trail shoe, you don't have that because of the rubberized and tougher bumpers here. So you're going to end up with bruised toenails, blisters on the end of your toes, or even lose a toenail if it was a long trail race. Rubberized sections, it's close mesh. There is a Gore-Tex option, waterproof. Standard affair with plenty of padding and instantly comfortable from the moment you slide your foot inside. Velcro tab on the heel if you want to add a gaiter. It's really one of the complete everyday trail running shoes. It's the best one from books and it's one of the best trail shoes around for the vast majority of people.
What's the best Brooks shoe for heavier runners? The Addiction GTS 15. The Addiction is a road shoe. It features the DNA loft cushioning. There is kind of more of it in this particular model. It's a big, chunky old shoe. It's straighter lasted than the Adrenaline or the Glycerin. So that adds stability to it. You've got guide rails in there as well. And it's generally speaking, got a higher volume to it. You've got 29 mil of stack cushioning in the heel, 17 mil in the forefoot, so 12 mil drop. Reasonably priced as well, 120 pounds in the UK, 140 dollars in the US. 346 grams, 12.2 ounces. So it is a little bit heavier shoe, but with that weight comes the durability and it does so very well. I think this is a really, really durable shoe. Slightly wider platform on the ground. Guide rails provide cupping and stability to the foot, which is sat within there again. And heavier runners, they're putting more through the cushioning. So the slightly denser nature of the cushioning in this material can handle that weight and remains durable. The guide rails provide stability as well. It's a well cushioned, good supportive, stronger built. So for the heavier runner, it does the job. And for those that also need a little bit more of a more of a maximum support type shoe, the Addiction is the one to go for. My choice for the best books racing shoe would be the Hyperion Max. Bear with me on this one. It's not a carbon plated shoe, but it does feature the nitrogen flash material. So this is nitrogen infused form, but it's a softer version. Without the carbon plate, it feels softer than the carbon plated version, the Hyperion Elite. For now, this is the softer, more responsive race shoe from Books, And it does have, now your foot's not gonna bend there, but the shoe does want to, from the rocker in the forefoot here, when you get to this point, it does want to flick you forward. So you do get a very responsive toe off in this shoe when you're running at speed. And I think given the price and the lack of carbon plate, it's the band's best fast running shoe right now. It's 160 pounds in the UK, $170. You're not paying carbon plated money. So that in itself creates um, a good value their shoe. The weight, 221 grams. So nice and light, 7.8 ounces. So as light as many of the other competitor carbon plated shoes without the carbon plate, but great value price point. Almost a hundred pounds, hundred dollars cheaper than a lot of carbon plated shoes. 28 mil stack in the heel, eight mil drop, 20 mil in the forefoot. It's perfectly adequate given the weight and the performance of the shoe. It is for fast running. We see it's got this cutaway in the heel, a steep rocker in the forefoot. It does encourage a more midfoot ground strike to it. And when you get to toe off, it's nice and soft and, and springy feel. So it is a real nice feel to it. Very minimal single layer fabric upper, laser cut holes for ventilation. It's never really an issue. Gentle padding through the tongue, again to reduce weight, but nicely padded around the ankle collar, flares away from the Achilles at the back ear. So no irritation, particularly when you're up onto your toes and you're putting more strain through the Achilles. Anyway, good rubber coverage and a good depth to the few mil of cushioning in the rubber there. So in the key areas, when your foot's striking the ground, plenty of cushioning. We're not gonna see that scuffing away. So very durable as well. So a shoe that's capable of faster paced tempo runs, maybe once a week and a speed session or interval session as well as racing. So I think for the money and the performance, a great all round faster paced running shoe and for me, the best books racing shoe of 2023. For beginners, the Trace 2. I'm gonna let you into a little bit of a secret about the Trace model from Books. And you may recognize this particular model as a ghost from about three or four years ago. When you're setting up a new production line for a new range of shoes, a new model, it's very expensive to set up the molds to create the sole and the midsole cushioning unit. So instead of just destroying these old molds, what books have done is brought out a cheaper version, a less expensive version of the original Ghost that used this mold. 
renamed it and given us a very good value shoe. So we've got a compression molded EVA midsole. It is the DNA form, the original DNA form from Books. It's um, significantly cheaper. So it's a great choice for those taking their first steps into their running journey or for those that simply want a very good value shoe. So it's £100, $100, weighs in at 244 grams, 8.6 ounces. Stack height is 27 millimetres in the heel, dropping 12 mil to 15 millimetres in the forefoot. So there's no shortage of cushioning. There's no kind of real lack of performance. This shoe would be perfectly adequate in doing all the same running that you would be doing in a Brooks Ghost, a Nike Pegasus, or a Mizuno Wave Rider. It's every bit as good. It's less expensive. The only thing you're going to notice is the durability, I think. I think this type of midsole will compress a little Little bit and in the more modern midsoles they're a little bit more resilient they're a little bit springier so they last a little bit longer but if you don't want to spend a big stack of money great value shoe for beginners the books trace 2 and finally generally speaking the number one in terms of overall value the most versatile model the ghost 15 most people will have had a books ghost at one point it's not the trendiest shoe around, but for pound per pound performance, I think it's one of the best shoes that's on the market right now, certainly from books and certainly from a lot of brands. I can't think of a brand that wouldn't have this shoe in their lineup if they could. At £135 or $140, I think it offers exceptional performance and value for money. It's got 29 millimeters of cushioning in the heel, a 12 millimeter drop down to 17 millimeters in the forefoot. It's got a great fitting upper engineered mesh. It's very breathable, it's seamless, it's plush. There's plenty of cushioning in the tongue through the ankle collar through the heel. There's a very plush finish to that. The ladies, when I checked, came in 13 different colour options. The men's had 12 different colour options. In the ladies, it comes in the regular B width, a narrow A width and a wide D width fit. And in the men's, it comes in a regular D width, the narrow B width, it comes in wide 2E, and it comes in an extra wide 4E. So they've got pretty much every colour choice you could think of covered every size and every width and if you want a Gore-Tex version they've got that as well so we have got a tremendously versatile shoe but in terms of performance it's a neutral cushion shoe and it works very very well the DNA Loft V2 cushioning soaks up the impact soaks up the miles the 12 mil drop rolls the foot forward nicely and we've got just a touch of a springy responsive feel in the toe off it is an everyday trainer so it's not super springy it's not super responsive it's not carbon plated it's not a super form but it's not carbon plated super form prices this is every bit as good as shoes costing 160 170 180 dollars and up and it's suitable for anyone for your first shoe if you've been running 20 years if you want a safe dependable durable and comfortable shoe the books ghost 15 as always all these shoe reviews are merely my opinion we're not paid to produce these shoes or endorse them from any brand let us know what you think do you wear books which is your favorite model and why and which shoes would you like us to see reviewing in the future? As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you again very soon.